hey and thank you for clicking play and as you would have seen on the thumbnail we're going to have a look at gunship by microprose now memories first of all um this is the first microprose flight sim i ever played back in the day i also remember vividly some of my friends at school saying oh gunship is so hard now obviously i'd played FA-18 Interceptor um, and F-16 Combat Pilot. So I was used to, you know, um, flight sims and the complexities of them. They were going, oh, you you won't be able to do gunship. It's just too difficult. And when I reported back to them, <laughs> they were actually, they didn't believe my war stories of me going, oh, it was great. I took off from here and then I flew to the target and I kind of hovered down and rotated around and took it out with my guns and then flew back to base. It was a great mission and they were like looking at me thinking I was making the whole thing up and lying through my teeth. But it was, I just took to it. I absolutely loved it. Um, a really cool uh, flight sim. So as always, let's have a look at what's in the box. What I've already taken out of the box, I'll let you know this, is the disc because um, I've had a quick look at it as I always do um, just to see the quality of the disc and I could see some discoloration on the disc surface itself. So I've given it a quick clean with isopropanol. So that's isopropyl. How do you pronounce it? Either of those. Um, and so that's actually sitting on the table airing to make sure it all evaporates off before I dare stick it in my squeaky clean A500 drive. But I'm really excited, so I hope it loads up. If it doesn't, then we'll do it off a WHD load version on the A1200. I've no problem doing that as an alternative. At the end of the day, I still own this in my collection, whether it runs or not off the original disc. Let's have a look at what's in the box. So, slide out box. This one, when I got it off eBay, this was actually free flapping. So that's been restuck by myself with some double-sided sticky um, on this one. Um, so that's a very easy way to re restore that kind of issue with these boxes because these are quite flimsy. Um, oh yeah, sorry, back of the box as well. Um, screenshots as always. Let's have a look inside. So inside, obviously I've already put that back. I will have confessed to you in the intro that I did actually have this disc out already to inspect it and I did do a bit of cleaning. So it'll be interesting to see if it fires up. There's the disc. Sometimes you just get a generic black box in ones you pick up off eBay. So it's very nice when you do get one with the genuine um, interior um, box. So do look out for that. If you're particular about that kind of thing, I got this one at a good price. Can't remember what it was, but I do remember it wasn't particularly expensive. Um, so just keep an eye out. It might not bother you. And to be honest, it doesn't bother me that much, but when they come up at the right price, you grab them, hey? There we go, there's the operations manual. I assume that might form part of the copy protection. I honestly can't remember, but that was a done thing um, back in the day. Anyway, very cool. We'll keep that out because I'm sure it forms part of the copy protection. But let's just see what else we got in the box. We have, oh, this is nice to see. Look at this. 1990 microprose catalog 1990 that's fantastic to have that included and we have the very important for these kind of games keyboard overlay so very glad that this is included this one has been cut out um, so that's fine because at the end of the day I buy these things to use them so I'm glad the person that originally bought this wasn't an Amiga 1000 owner <laughs> otherwise we'd be in all sorts of strife and that doesn't really work <laughs> because of my my screen um, my monitor stand uh, I'll, I'll sort that out later what's the last thing we've got in here oh there's two more things so we've got a technical supplement in there and lastly so this looks like a nice complete set complete set we've got the registration card all right i'll get set up and we'll play okay the moment of truth <laughs> hopefully i let this air for long enough Doesn't sound too bad. It's 
Sounds all right so far. These are good noises. It's getting somewhere. That red screen that comes up. Micropros, are you seeing this? Let me just see if you're seeing this. Yes, it will be a little bit bleached out for you. I know for the where the lighting is at the moment, but it's my first reactions of loading this up after all this time. Come on. <gasps> Yes. Oh yes. Volume. Oh, that's right. <laughs> And then Ride of the Valkyries. <laughs> How good is that? That's freaking awesome. That is so <laughs> That is so freaking awesome to hear that again. Take that down a bit. Does it fly off? Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's have a look. Use the mouse to select identification, then press the fire button. So I think you have to identify. I used to know these. I got to the point of just knowing these. Shall I take a stab? Is it a BMP2? I'm actually gonna, I'm going for BMP2. Incorrect, <laughs> damn it. It's been a long time, all right? You're assigned to training in the USA. Oh, screw you. It looks like we're doing training. <laughs> Obviously, what you actually do is you, there's a section in here with the enemy vehicle identification. And this is the copyright protection to prove that you have the manual. Obviously, these would be quite easy to fo photocopy. Um, okay, so essentially it's the American equivalent, I think, of the BMP2. No, uh, was it that one? I can't tell the difference. I'm not as good at this as I used to be. Right. Um, weather is perfect. This will be a day flight. Okay. I can't remember anything about how to play this. Seriously can't. Um, I'm just going to move this out so that we can place the very important keyboard overlay in place. Because we'd be mad men to try without that there. Right, I'm just going to go with the default loadout. Continue. Oh, that's right. The disc is right protected. When I took it out of the box, it wasn't right protected. I should have made a copy. It was already not right protected. <sighs> Given the previous owner did it. I'm going to do the same. And what I'm going to do straight after this video is actually make a backup copy of this disc, right? <laughs> oh dear. Seriously, it was it was because as soon as I took it out, I'm like, okay, that needs to be right protected. Some games were like that. You had, which is why they were so up on copy protection, because you had to have the disc not right protected. Volume gunship has a read write error. Volume gumship is not happy. <sighs> Which is fine. Oh. Boo, okay, look, that's fine. Volume gunship has a read write error. Um, let's just try rebooting from scratch. I'll chop this bit out, as in the getting back to that point in the menu.
that disc is now really not happy. So that's a shame. So we'll move up to the A2, uh, A5, A2, what is it called? <laughs> the, A, the A1200. Well, curse video time. Because yes, I can play this on WHD load, but the issue is actually the sound doesn't work properly. You get the sound of the rotors, um, but nothing else. Insert clip of confusion here. How do you take off? Do you turn your engines on? Oh. Ah, uh, here's a target. There we go. We destroyed something. We destroyed. We destroyed some dots on the floor. It's weird because I thought the cannon made a noise, but it wasn't making any noise. That led me to thinking that maybe. Um, the yeah, 1200 wasn't working. Insert clip of me testing all four channels using Amiga test kit. Here. So I've ditched all my previous footage of me playing it on this. And um, this disc, unfortunately, you, you actually can't make a backup copy. It is copy protected, and the manual says nothing about making a backup copy. But when I uh, right enabled it, this has actually killed this disc. It won't now go further than the, um, the load screen. It will get past the load screen, and then it will give a read-write error, regardless of if it's right protected or not. So that yeah, whatever. Look, I'll be able to restore this at some point in the future. What I've done is I've written an ADF to this. It doesn't have a crack tro, so that's good. But what it does have is the copy protection is cracked. So it's not a pure copy. So I certainly wouldn't write this at back to that. I'll have to get a grease weasel and do a full a restoration at some point. But I think the, surf, the, the surface structure of the disc is good. Goodness knows what went wrong. Anyway, let's move on. So what you're going to be saved today is me faffing about not knowing how to fly because guess what? I've now got past that. Um, so yeah. So here we go. What you do to fly your little chopper. Turn your engines on. Engine one. Because that's the sound engines make. Um, and then... You engage your rotor. So that's kind of like your engines are running, but you haven't taken your foot off the clutch, so the wheels aren't engaged, as if it was a car. Helicopter, we're engaging the engines with the, the rotor mechanism. So that's good. And then what we have to do is, we, if there's a real helicopter, we'd be pulling up on the collective. Is that the one? Cyclic collective. Cyclic. That one, I think. Um, anyway, let's go up. Let's do that. Let's do that. So this is the equivalent of pulling another joystick upwards. And you can see we're climbing. Here's our rate of climb. Here's our altitude increasing. Now, I don't want to go up that far. So we will basically bring that back down. I actually want to go down to... Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to go down to below 500 feet, I think. I think that's where you're safe. And I can nudge these. I've got a slow, slow up, slow down, fast up, fast down here. Because I want to do some introduction to helicopter flying, first of all. There's your up and down ease controls. We're doing this. If I pull back on the stick, what's actually going to happen is, instead of climbing, we are climbing a little bit, but we're actually going backwards. And we can see that by things moving into the foreground. You can't do that in a jet, unless it's a Harrier or an F-35. Other than that, you can't do that in a jet. Um, obviously, anything you do is, is going to affect your lift a little bit. What you can also do is, um, because we're kind of hovering here, uh, by affecting the tail rotor, so the push, um, how much the, the tail rotor is compensating for the torque of the main rotor will give you a rotational movement or yaw, which obviously on a 
plane is done by rudder controls. Same though, um, it would be your foot, your feet controlling that in the actual aircraft. Rudder on an aircraft is controlled by your feet, as is tail rotor control in a helicopter controlled by your feet. And then obviously what you can do in a helicopter that you can't do in a plane other than the Harrier jump jet F-35 um, is you can essentially strafe. So notice that didn't turn me. I am essentially flying sideways. And again, it will have a bit of impact on your rate of climb. Right, all good to fly helicopters? Fantastic. Let's shoot some shit. Right, so pushing forward. That's always going to affect lift, but closer you get to the ground, you're going to get a bit of an updraft anyway. But really, I want to try and stay below 500, I think, is what I want to do. I've got a radio message there, so I'm going to read space. Surveillance alert, enemy helicopter, airborne. That's not good. Right, come on. And then, alert, this is the great thing, isn't it? All that stuff I just told you about flying helicopters. I've never flown a bloody helicopter. Of course I haven't. It's all because I used to spend so many hours reading these things. Oh, right, so we've got some targets coming up. So let's go. I've got all my weapons here. What do I want? Not Hellfire, not Sidewinder. These ones, that will take it out. I want to take it out before it, it starts shooting at us. Where's it going? Where's it going over? Screw you, I'm going guns. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, no, wrong one, wrong button. I just hit the ground. It's a good job it's a training mission. I just hit the ground. Target. Take it out with the guns. You destroyed the secondary target. Fantastic. Here we go. Oh, we're a bit high. And now I, I think 500 was the sweet spot. We're now at 1,000 feet, which... <laughs> <laughs> which isn't good. And I've got a blip on the radar, which I'm pretty sure is a hind helicopter. So I'm going to turn my infrared jamming on. That's zero. And my radar jamming on. That's six. Oh, there it is. That's the hind helicopter. He couldn't see us because I turned my radars off. That's why he didn't shoot at us. That's pretty cool. Shall we see if we can land? I'll edit it. <laughs> We'll get back to base. I'm being shot at. I'm dropping flares. That was the missile hitting a flare. Uh oh, there's another one. Dropping shafts and flares. Right, we're below a thousand feet now. Descending a little bit quickly. So let's level that out. Right, and then let's pull it up when we get over there, like this. Yeah. Not quite as quick as I was hoping. And then let's use, okay, so we're now, we're not climbing. I wanna be level in terms of altitude and I wanna just come backwards. I'm gonna look to my le right, to my left, I'm at a thousand feet. That's a bit too high to see what the heck's going on. I'm going to bring it back a little bit. Just going by the map here now, really. Right, now I'm going to level it off. I want to make sure we've got no forward or backward momentum. So this should be at zero. Right, that's at zero. And then I want to slow, slowly bring it down. I'm pressing the wrong buttons again. And I just want to, while we do that, I want to rotate round. So I can see that building at the base. All right, let's look. Okay. Down she comes. I don't think we're there. I think I need to come back. Oh, 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 yes we are. Let's bring it not too fast. Right, I just want to hover it there. Just want to see where we are. So now I'll give it a rotate. 
Where's the building? There's the building. Right, I don't want to hit that building. So I'm just going to strafe away from that a bit. It's like playing friggin' Elite Dangerous. You should see me strafe a little bit over there in, on the map. I oh know, it's strafing the other way. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm off the freaking map now. Bollocks, let's just put it down. Oh, not too fast. Uh, we're right back towards that building again. No, don't like it, don't like it. <laughs> we're down. <laughs> not quite what I was going for, but we're down. <sighs> Disengage rotors. Safety first. Disengage engines. And we're done. <laughs> you landed hard. <laughs> you are currently at a friendly base. Your craft is undamaged. Uh, secondary mission is complete. You are healthy. Didn't do primary mission, but there we go. So look, I'm very pleased to have such a complete copy. Bit of a shame that the disc decided to insist that I <laughs> take off the copy protection and then proceed to bugger itself. Um, that is a real shame. <laughs> that is a real shame. But there are ways and means, um, and I will have this disc restored. And at the end of the day, this backup disc that I've made from an ADF, well, it's working for me absolutely fine. So that's good. Thanks for watching. This video was a pain in the ass to make. I can't believe. Far out. Bloody stupid disc.